Hello, lovely internet strangers. In this episode of the A Squares Corner, I will once again be talking about a song. This song is called Frankie and Johnny. So I'm going to tell you how I came across this song, a little bit about why I find it interesting, the history of the song, and we'll just go from there. I was just listening on Spotify to a bunch of music I had grabbed from various lists of 60s music, soul, R&B, R&B standing for rhythm and blues. I listen to a lot of music and save a lot of music because I source music for partner dancing, but also because I just like making playlists. It's like a fun thing for me. So the song comes on and I'm like, yeah, this is a great song. I'm going to save this. And I'm listening to the lyrics and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting song. This would be interesting to talk about on my channel. So let me read you the lyrics for this particular version of the song. Brooke Benton's version of Frankie and Johnny from 1961 goes, little Frankie went down to the bar room. She asked for a glass of beer. She said, hey bartender, has my Johnny been here? He's my man, but he's done me wrong. The bartender said, Frankie, you know I won't tell you no lie. He left here about a minute ago with a gal named Alice Fry. He's your man, but he's doing you wrong. Frankie was a good little woman. Surely everybody knows. She paid $100 for Johnny's new suit of clothes. She loved her man, but he'd done her wrong. Well, then Frankie went down Broadway with a razor in her hand. She said, stand back, all you women. I'm here for my cheating man. Yes, he's my man, but he's done me wrong. It was on a Friday morning about a half past nine o'clock. Frankie pulled her 44 and fired three fatal shots. She shot her man cause he done her wrong. Why don't you run, Frankie? They said. Frankie, why don't you run? Cause here come the chief of police with the 44 smokeless gun. You killed your man. We know he done you wrong. Yeah, he done you wrong, Frankie. You should have shot him 40 times. I'm a witness, Frankie. I was there. When you shot that man I saw and then it kind of just fades out. So, as you can see, I was struck by those lyrics. If you're a subscriber and you've watched most of my previous videos, you'll remember my video about some of the stories in The Fraud of Feminism about female criminals and the sentiment from Chicago of he had it coming. And these kinds of stories from real life definitely made their way into popular music, especially in blues music, and rhythm and blues is an outgrowth of blues music. So I wasn't surprised to hear the lyrics to the song, but at the same time, it definitely struck me. And I wanted to know more about this song, so I looked into it and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. So this song is in fact based on a real incident, possibly two murders, but it seems like there was one that was the main genesis for the song. So this murder took place in an apartment building at 212 Targi Street in St. Louis, Missouri at two in the morning on October 15th, 1899. Frankie Baker, a 22 year old woman, shot her 17 year old lover, Alan, also known as Albert, Britt, in the abdomen. Britt had just returned from a cakewalk at a local dance hall where he and another woman, Nellie Bly, not the journalist, and she was also known as Alice Pryor, had won a prize in a slow dancing contest. And this man died of his wounds four days later at the city hospital. On trial, she claimed that her lover had attacked her with a knife and that she acted in self-defense. She was acquitted and died in a Portland, Oregon mental institution in 1952. So in 1899, when this murder took place. Someone named Bill Dooley, who was apparently a popular St. Louis balladeer, composed a song called Frankie Killed Allen. The first published version of the music to Frankie and Johnny appeared in 1904. So this is a song that has been done so many times. Wikipedia says there are 256 recorded versions. Some students of folk music say that this song actually predates the earliest published versions, but the fact that the familiar version does not appear in print before 1925 is strange for a song that is allegedly so old and well-known, according to one music historian, and he says that suggests that it's not so ancient as some of the folk song writers would have one believe. So the interesting thing when I started looking into the song is that it really has a folk tradition. That is, it's not like when people do new versions of a song and it's the same lyrics and they just do it in a new style, or maybe if it's gender swapped, originally it was sung by a man and now a woman is singing it, they might change some of the pronouns or something like that, but most of the time 
time, the lyrics are the same. In this case, the lyrics are different in most of the versions. There are a lot of similarities, there's a lot of overlap, but everyone kind of puts their own unique spin on it. Wikipedia lists a bunch of the artists that have covered it, mostly men, some women, like Lena Horne, who's a really amazing jazz and blues singer. Some names I wasn't surprised to see, like Johnny Cash, Sam Cooke, Sammy Davis Jr., Bob Dylan, Stevie Wonder, Fats Waller, Dinah Shore. Elvis Presley did a recording in 1966 and it became a gold record. But then there are some more modern names like Jack Johnson did a version, Lindsay Lohan did a version. So I'll share briefly some of the ways that the other versions differ lyrically. I love Sam Cooke, so let's talk about Sam Cooke's version. His version goes, Frankie and Johnny was sweethearts, at least that's the way the story goes. Frankie bought everything for Johnny, from his sports car to his Ivy League clothes. Oh, he was a man all right. Oh, but he was doing her wrong. Just to show you what can happen. A friend came running to Frankie. She said, you know I wouldn't tell you no lie. I saw your man riding in his Jaguar with a chick named Nellie Bly. Oh, if he was your man, honey, let me tell you, he was doing you wrong. Let me tell the story. Frankie ran around the corner and peeked in a swinging place. And there she saw Johnny with a woman. He had his arms around her waist. Oh, he was a man all right. But Frankie could see that he was doing her wrong. And oh, let me tell you. Frankie reached down in her pocketbook and up with a long 44, she shot once, twice, three times, and Johnny fell on the hardwood floor. Oh, he was a man all right, but she shot him because he was doing her wrong. Now this version is a little bit different because we get some of what Johnny was thinking, but the last thing he told her was, Frankie, you know I love you. Why? Honey, why did you do that? Frankie, I was telling her about you. Frankie, you know I love you. Frankie, you know that I love you. Now, Frankie, you know good and well that I love you. Frankie, I'll always love you, baby. Frankie, you know I can't do without you. Frankie, you know I love you. And I know, and I know I was doing you wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Let me tell you. Frankie, baby, you know I love you. So at the end, we have this man dying and he's like, why'd you shoot me? I know I was cheating on you, but I was just kind of cutting it off. I was telling her about you, whatever. I didn't see that in any of the other versions that I looked at, although, like I said, there's apparently 256 recorded versions. Sammy Davis Jr.'s version is a lot more in his Rat Pack style. His goes, Frankie and Johnny were lovers. Man, how those two cats could love. They promised to do one another, long as stars remained above. He was her mate, but he couldn't fly straight. Now, he was a cat that was lazy. Thinking of work made him frown, and she had a bank that was crazy, and his his loans were not turned down. She was his fool, and he played it real cool. Enter a doll, name of Nellie. Man, poets like Byron or Shelley would have dubbed this chick the most. Jack, this gal came on, sort of like a female Don Juan. You never saw such a tangle. That Frankie sure fought for her gent. She threw punches from every angle. Man, it looked like the main event. Someone rang a bell, but daddy-o, they couldn't save Nell. Frankie had whipped out a pistol, and everyone made for the door. She started bust in the crystal. Jack, she made that cannon roar. Now ladies, be careful. Look out. Frankie, put down that gun. And when she fired the last shot, did Johnny hear? He did not. Man, she was such a lady. Oh, how that Frankie did suffer. Her tears were falling like rain. The sheriff who came in to cuff her used the cuffs with the platinum chain, and nobody knew just who was taken in who. Now everyone bows when they pass her, and Frankie's the toast of the town. Man, the moral is really a gasser. If he cheats, simply shoot him down. He was her mate, but he wouldn't fly straight. Here's a thought for you to contemplate. If you want to love, you gotta fly straight. Any questions? So I'm gonna pause there and kind of just talk about these different versions. Brooke Benton's version is the simplest. It has the least amount of detail. She basically just goes down to the bar, asks about her man. He tells her that her man's been here with someone else and he's cheating on her. She's painted as a good woman who supports Johnny, buys him a new suit, that she loves him, but he's cheating on her he's done her wrong. I like the dramatic image in this one where she goes down Broadway with a razor in her hand and says, stand back all you women, I'm here for my cheating man. And then she shoots him three times. That's a common theme. Even though in the original story, as far as I know, she only shot him once in the abdomen. And then Brooke Benton sings at the end, you should have shot him 40 times. So it goes right in line with that theme from Chicago or from all these stories of female criminals that they were justified in what they did. Even though it's definitely 
definitely not an eye for an eye. It's not like, okay, my man's cheating on me. I'm gonna go cheat on him. No, no. My man's cheating on me. He's gonna die. I guess I kind of think of Peterson talking about chaos being feminine and all these sayings throughout history about hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Now, obviously, not every woman is gonna go shoot her man because he cheated on her. I think most women aren't gonna do that. But I think that, say, beyond the small percentage of women who would actually do that, I think there's a wider proportion of women who have felt that emotionally, who have maybe fantasized about killing someone that cheated on them, or probably a large percentage of women who hear a story like this and think, okay, like, I wouldn't actually do that, but she was justified. Like, you go, girl. He got what was coming to him. I have a friend who was married for a long time and got divorced and his wife has issues, but he said that, you know, there's something about the chaotic feminine, that passion that can be unleashed. It's like a double-edged sword, right? Like, there's something appealing to be overwhelmed by that passion for you when it's good. That's the fun part, but watch out when they're not happy with you, right? Now, in the Sam Cooke version, it's definitely doing more of a, like, hey, I'm telling you a story kind of a thing. He says, just to show you what can happen, as in, just to show you what can happen if you're a man with a woman who is taking care of you, buying everything for you, and then you cheat on her. So in this version, she actually sees him with the other woman with his arms around her waist. There's no parading around with a razor. She just has the gun in her pocketbook. She's got that 44 and just pulls it out. And then this is the version with Johnny talking about how much he loved her and didn't she understand. I think it's interesting to consider female pride here that it's not just that he was stepping out on her and she found out about it. It's that other people are telling her that he's stepping out on her. So her reputation as a woman who can hold her man's interest, so to speak, who is more beautiful and charming and amazing than other women, that reputation is at stake. And maybe that is so distressing to her that he must die. It's also interesting to consider that in the incident that inspired the song, the woman was 22 and her lover was 17. Obviously, it's usually the other way around. The man is older. So I wonder if in this original incident, you know, she was with this younger man. She thinks, oh, I've got him. I'm higher status than he is. Like how lucky he is as a 17 year old to get a beautiful worldly 22 year old woman like me, not like the teenage girls that he could get. It doesn't say how old the chick he was stepping out on her with was, but I kind of imagine she was someone closer to his age. And then in the Sammy Davis Jr. version, it's another case where he's telling the story and there's a moral to it, which he makes very explicit. And in this version, there's an added layer that Frankie and Johnny had made promises to each other to always love each other and he just couldn't fulfill that. He couldn't fly straight. And also the song further paints him as being lazy, he doesn't work, she's paying for everything. And this song paints Nelly as someone who is a female Don Juan, someone who is actively going out to seduce Johnny and take him away from Frankie. And in this version, Frankie goes and punches the lights out of the woman who's trying to steal her man. And then same thing, she pulls out the gun. But in this version, she is celebrated at the end, even after she's been taken to jail. And she obviously gets out because people bow when they pass her in the street. And the song very explicitly states that the moral is, if he cheats, simply shoot him down. And that if you want to love, you gotta fly straight. Because otherwise you're gonna get shot. Good times. So I just thought I would make an A Squares Corner video about this and just kind of share and ramble. I was just struck by the lyrics and then it had this interesting kind of folk history and I had never heard of this song and I consider myself pretty well versed in blues, jazz, soul music and I'd never even heard of Brooke Benton except for I think like a duet he did with Dinah Washington but it was interesting to dig in and see how people have taken this real story of a woman who killed her lover just for cheating on her and it's not even clear from that original story that he cheated on her in the way that we would think about it, that he was hooking up with this chick. He just won a dance competition with her. I'm not sure what a slow dancing competition would have been in 1899 and how risque slow dancing would have been considered. Like, is this the equivalent of you caught your man grinding on someone else at the club? I know what a slow dance competition is in modern day in the context of the swing scene. Modern swing, aka 
a.k.a. Lindy Hop, tends to think of blues dancing as slow dancing, whereas blues dancers just think of themselves as blues dancers. But in 1899, Lindy Hop and blues, as we know it today, didn't really emerge more until the 20s at best, maybe the 30s. And so I'm not really sure what their version of slow dancing would have been because the cakewalk, which has its own history we'll get into, has more of a upright ballroomy style from what I know. And we're not really going to have video footage from 1899. So I'm kind of curious if I could dig up what would have been considered slow dancing at that time. I can put a link or maybe a video clip of what I think of as slow dancing in the swing and blues scene, but it just linked back to the idea of female criminals and being justified in your actions and taking actions way out of line of an eye for an eye and how that might relate to female pride and competition with other women and what it means to their own value if their man is stepping out of them, especially if he does it publicly. And there's obviously something to this song if it's been recorded at least 256 times, not counting the original compositions and all the ones that might be lost to the sands of time. So just a little fun music history lesson for you as well. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.